Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Pinebook. It's a $99 14-inch Linux laptop, though they have an 11-inch version for only $89. So let's find out what all the fuss is about right after this. Malduino is an open-source, Arduino-based bad USB. You can use it to inject keystrokes at lightning speed, gain a shell, change someone's desktop wallpaper, anything you can do with a keyboard and 15 minutes of your time, Malduino can do in a matter of seconds. To find out more, see the Indiegogo link in the description. So for full disclosure, when I found out that the Pinebook was a thing, I emailed them and asked for a sample. I get offers for free products all the time, but they usually suck so I don't take them up on them, though as you'll find out, the Pinebook is different. First impressions are actually quite impressive. It comes in a carrying case, though mine was totaled in the post. The laptop itself has a very clean design, surprisingly polished for something at this price point. The fact the front shell has no branding was actually really nice to see, though it does come with stickers if you're into that kind of thing. It's not bulky at all, at only 12mm thick and weighing in at 1.26kg. As for I.O., on the left you've got a charging port, USB 2.0 and mini HDMI, and on the right, another USB 2.0, headphone jack and micro SD slot, which you can actually boot from. Inside you'll find a 1366 by 768 glossy screen. That's surprisingly okay given you're not going to be watching a whole load of Netflix on this thing. More on that later. The keyboard is also quite standard. I work daily on Cherry MX Red switches, and using this really didn't throw me off. The keys aren't spongy at all, and unless you use a lot of force, there's barely any flex in the keyboard. As for the trackpad, well, I'm not a great fan. It feels like it's made from the same material as the keyboard, which just kind of feels weird for a trackpad, and really threw me off for the first few minutes, though you do get used to it, and it has this weird tendency of being able to click when you're not actually clicking the touchpad, you're just pushing the bottom of the notebook. So what is this thing even running on? Is this Pinebook just a glorified potato? Well, it sports a 1.2 GHz 64-bit ARM Cortex CPU, which, from what I gather, is exactly the same one as in the Raspberry Pi 3. The Pinebook also has double the RAM, 2GB, compared to the Pi's 1GB. It comes with 16GB of flash memory and Wi-Fi BGN and Bluetooth 4.0. So being that it has similar specs to a Pi 3, and that it's only double the price, but comes with monitor, keyboard, trackpad, and everything else, um, I think you're getting a lot for your money. To open it up, you first have to get past 10 Phillips head screws. Once you're inside, you'll see there's a pretty large battery. Most of the important stuff is covered by shields, so not much to see there. However, there is a lot of room for extras, so it'll be interesting to see if people come up with mods for this thing. Now, I'm not one of those people that has a favourite Linux distro for every day of the week, though the 16 gigs of flash memory come preloaded with Mate, which just seems fine, I guess. Let me know if you think otherwise down in the comments. The battery life is great, 10 plus hours of normal use from its 10 amp hour battery, though charging does take a long time, 6 hours plus from my experience. Oh, and by the way, it only comes with either US or European plugs. So what can you do with this thing? What are its boundaries? Well, web browsing is pushing it. Even on lighter sites, it's quite sluggish. As for media consumption, video playback works, just don't expect it to be super smooth. The speakers are tinny and very quiet, which is very welcome in certain circumstances. So, should you buy one? Well, I'm using mine as more of a client, SSHing into my servers, VNC viewing and such. If you want to play around in Linux, then one of these would be great. Just remember, there are very visible limits to this thing. Also, something to take into consideration is that you're going to have to pay shipping, plus maybe import fees depending on your country, which could increase the cost by 50%, so do make sure to calculate that before you buy. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and stay tuned for more hacking videos.